Welcome. Happy July. Hey. Hi. I guess I'm going to do adults then, right? <laughs> Oh, um, do you want to uh, take some notes? I wasn't, okay. I can take notes. I don't mind. Really? You don't mind? Okay. I, that's awesome. I, I take so much. Sure. Do you, uh, you want to start off introducing everyone? Because we do have Becky here today. Okay. Here today. Okay. I'm Janine Greaves, the mayor's. Everything. You're the mayor's about everything. Am I, yeah. Uh, okay. Very good. <laughs> I'm so frazzled this morning. <laughs> and um, uh, my name is Alana Gurjoy, and um, I work at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. And I'm currently on as a Greenfield resident slot, which I'm going to be off soon-ish, but I will be here as a as an ongoing guest. All right, I'm just getting outside. Oh, no. this, the this is it. There. Welcome. And we were just going around introducing ourselves, so you're next, actually. <laughs> no pressure. I'm her pronouns. I'm the director of NELFIT, an agency serving survivors of sexual and domestic violence. Anything else? And I live in Greenfield. Right, hey, because you just... Well, it's like more than 95. Ooh. Oh, that's right exciting. Yeah. Uh, Overland Street near uh, Stony, Stony Burnham. Nice location. Yeah, it's a good neighborhood. They do a cushy swap. Very yes, excited. They do. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Are you buying yeah. Martin's? Mm -hmm. Are you going to add Martin's? I don't think so. It was. We'll talk after. Someone had an early onset dementia. Very sad. But. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, I'm Becky. Um, I use she and her pronouns, and I'm the director of the Salazen Project, and we also support survivors of domestic violence. Um, here in Franklin County. I'm Krishna Plant. I'm the economic uh, development assistant for the city. I'm not on this committee, but I'm here to help with graphic design needs. Great. We'd be lost without Christian. And do we want to do the online folks? Katie, you sure. want to Take it away, Scott. <laughs> I'm Scott Smith. Uh, I'm retired and uh, retired educator, and I've been on the board for, I don't know, Alana probably knows better than me, three years or so. Oh, no, before the pandemic. Um, so it, it actually um, was, it was pre pandemic, right? Yeah. So that would be 19, like five, almost yeah, five, years. five years. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And flies. I'm Katie Rosewarm, the director of the Domestic Violence Sexual Assault Projects at the District Attorney's Office, and this is only my second year being on the task force, but happy to be here. And I use she, her pronouns. And I'm Wynn Perry. I'm the Precinct 7 Counselor, so I'm representing the City Council on this task force. I've only been here for about four or five months. Great addition, though. Okay, do you want to start with the agenda items, which is the walk-in map, and Amanda's going to present October. Oh, October domestic, yeah. It's more of a discussion, but yeah. Yeah. So um, I don't have a lot to say. I just got some additional information, which is going to help me to complete the back of the um, information so I can send that to Christian. And I'm sorry I haven't sent that to you. I was waiting on a couple things, okay. and I didn't want to send you something incomplete. So um, I will now be able to send it to you within the week because I just got a couple of um, confirmations on information. So it'll be um, accurate. That'll be both for the back and there'll be a little change as well for the, um, for the front map. Um, uh, I think since you were here last, I don't know if you heard Becky saying that Salison moves. So we just want to make sure that Salison's in the right spot in the front. Oh, yeah. Map. Yeah, I have a note here. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. So we just want to point to it correctly. Um, so that's great. And so that's really, those are really the, the changes we're going to make. Other than that, um, I think we're pretty good to go on the walking map. And so um, I will send out a final uh, sort of, I'll send out a final list to people with the descriptions and I'll send that to Christian 
and then we can go ahead and move forward. I don't believe we, it's not like we need to vote on the descriptions. I don't think it's not something we need to vote on. I don't think we need to vote on sort of like a semi-final draft, but maybe do we need to vote on a final draft of it? I don't know exactly in terms of um, open meeting law, if people have a thought about that. Um, I think no? if, if you're gonna use your, are you planning on using your budget or yes. yeah, I think you at that point you vote on that and that considered. Perfect. Okay, great. So hopefully at the next meeting we can vote on using the budget for the final version and I will send you that information within the week. Cool. Um, and do you have any other thoughts or questions related to the map or anything else about it at this point? Not really. My only thing is I, I made a version that um is obviously for if you're at the library and I made a version for if you're at Nelquit. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if there's any other high priority ones to make that all the distances and times are from that location. Because those are the two that you had already made. Those are the two that we did. Do you feel like you need one, that you want one from your... I think we're kind of in the middle. So, <laughs> so which one I think either middle? way is fine. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Okay, that's great. Yeah. Why don't, I think it makes sense to start with those two. Does anyone else have another thought about that? I feel like the DA's office is close enough to the library um, that that works. And I think like same thing with like the transit center and some of the other places. Yeah. But if there's anything else, people feel like if CSO, for example, says we really want one from Arch Place or, you know, something like that, we could go ahead and do that maybe next based on request. Um, does that make sense to folks? Uh, can I suggest, are we still going to do the different language? At least Absolutely. Language. Yeah, yeah we would that. really love to do that. We, we have money in the budget. That's fantastic. Yeah. And we had talked about using UMass translation services yeah. for that. Yeah, that's what we, that's where we do. And then we have our Spanish speaking staff, like, read it just okay. to make sure, but I think they do a really good job. I think that would be important. And, that, and yeah, the prices from the jails very reasonable. Um, yeah, yeah very, very cheap. Yep. That's awesome. Um, and did we decide, might be a good thing to decide in this meeting is actually which languages we want to do. I think everyone agreed on Spanish. And the question is, do we want other, do we want Moldovan? Do we want right. other languages? I don't know which other languages feel. How expensive is, is it to get the translation is it really depends it depends on the amount of content and so we won't really know until we send them for a quote when we have the final full version with the back as well okay because we do have five hundred dollars in the budget okay. for this whole fiscal year and i believe this is going to be our only project that's great and i actually for the, I, for the last fiscal year right like this project was approved in the last fiscal but that year that money's gone that yeah. money we bought oh, the banner so we didn't, yeah, oh yeah. good so okay it's i was just making sure stuff. we didn't yeah, yeah. just lose no that. no it no, got no, spent on the banner and kind of stuff so yeah this was going to be for 20 fiscal year 2025 yeah um so why don't we see, i mean they'll give us a free quote yeah. we could ask for moldovian and okay. they'll say it's going to cost you this yeah. much money and then the council can decide and in terms of demographics, are there any other shifts in, um, like, do we, I mean, I know we have um, a newer, um, you know, group of folks from Haiti. I've seen things translated into Rio. And I, I guess one of the things I don't know is, but I actually, Creole might be good. Some of them actually are Spanish speaking, not Creole speaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I do wonder if Creole or French is a good additional language. I just don't know what the sort of the very current um, breakdown is. So maybe we can find that out and then get a quote from UMass Translation Services. If we need to throw some extra money into this, I may be able to, I have um, a federal grant that I'm working on that's ending um, at the end of the federal fiscal year, which is the end of September, that um, I probably could throw a couple hundred dollars towards this. If oh, nice. needed. It's, it's a Greenfield specific grant, which makes it a lot easier to use for mm. something for Greenfield. Yeah. So putting a couple hundred dollars towards it would probably be not a, an issue if needed. Would be good. I think um, also Salazen, I, I love the idea of the French Creole for the um, refugee families at Days Inn. And um, we have access through the Department of Public Health to money for translation. So I'd be happy to ask. Yeah, yeah I'd be happy to ask. I think the more languages, the better. Yeah. Um, sounds awesome. Yeah. Very Great. Good. Well, we can work together on that then and maybe um, so it sounds like next steps, I'm going to send that other information to you. 
you're going to, are you going to reach out to UMass? Should we reach out to UMass? What's the best way to do that? Um, once I have the back of it and I can format it, um, if there's any formatting that needs to happen, okay. at that point, I'll, it'll be like a, a draft version that's good enough for the quote and I can send it over to them. Perfect. Thank you so much Thank for you. doing that. That's awesome, Christian. One email. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, but if it's an inconvenient, I don't want to share. Thank you. There'll be some peanut butter M and M's for you. <laughs> I have some, that sounds good. <laughs> right, right. That sounds great. I'm sold. <laughs> I have something a little off script to say, which is okay. that I have in the last month run into three residents of Greenfield who sang your praises, Janine, and I just wanted to let you know. Oh wow! So that in case so that, that's recorded. Because okay. seriously, I just had three people who were like, "The mayor chose the best person when they chose Janine." So I just wanted to say that it was just from I just was reminded now it's on record. So, yes, it's on record. Yeah, I mean, like, there's three different Okay, I'll put that in the minutes. <laughs> yeah, residents love Janine. Um, sorry. So, okay. And I'm not even going to be a resident, so you know I'm not just saying it. Um, all right. I have one thing. I don't know if it made the agenda. Is there any interest in marching in the fair parade September? Idea. Uh, yes. Is that Thursday? It's a Thursday. At five or five thirty. See if I can find the date. Where does the parade start? I believe it's the middle school, and it goes all the way to the fairgrounds. Okay. All right. And we can think about it. We don't have to have an answer today, but I just have to get our application in. If there's. So would that be Thursday the fifth? Yeah, it's er the yes, it's I believe early September fifth. Okay. Yeah, August? sorry. Yeah, September September fifth. Yeah. yeah. I am in an all day diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging training that day. So I won't be able to do that myself, but I think it's an awesome idea. Any other interest? Yeah, when, when we did uh -huh. the pride parade, you get a lot of people who took interest in us as we walked by. I mean, if the mayor could participate and maybe a couple other counselors, it really gives us visibility with the banner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great if idea. I'm available, I'll do it. Okay. What time is it? The three? The five is that. Oh, maybe I can do it then. You also wouldn't have to go the whole way if you didn't really want to. You could drop out at Dunkin' Donuts if you might do that. Yeah. Oh, I'll be at the bottom good. of the hill to, <laughs> to the yeah. I'll be like a parade dropout. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, Tag team. It's not given time. Okay. Well, maybe we can revisit this really on in August. Or it, do you want it's to either different? five or five thirty though, okay, only because I I watch it. It's, it's yeah. at five, Janine. It's five. five. Yep. Okay. Five at the middle school. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. And I have to have the application in by the August twenty third. So send it. You want me to send it in? Sounds great. Yeah. I think like there's people. Yeah. Yeah, you just need at least two to carry the banner, right? That's true. Um, and, and I'll definitely sign the mayor up to walk. And, and, and that's I'll what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. You know, and actually, anybody any anybody who wants to march with us is welcome. All right. So, so we don't, that. do we need to vote on that or we just do it? I don't that's know. A how to, question. I don't know how these. You want to take a formal Wait. role just yeah. to march in the parade? Do we have to vote on that or not? I would vote on. Okay, thank you. <laughs> my my committees wouldn't vote on something. Like oh, they the ones that I support. So. Okay. Okay. And the last thing on the agenda is Amanda. Do you want to discuss October? Yeah. So October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Typically, I know Salison will run some, maybe do some events and extra workshops. Nelfit is planning their workshops and potentially an event on October nineteenth. Um, we're thinking about a family-friendly movie screening so that it's one that showcases healthy relationships That's rather than showing one that showcases like the trauma of domestic violence. We want more families to get involved. Um, that but, positive social norming. Yeah, exactly. Do you know the movie? Um, we have a list. So if you have any, any suggestions, let me know. So oh. we, um, we'll vet them first. Cause where do you show the movie? That's what we're trying to, we've reached out to the Shea a couple of times. They haven't gotten back to us. And then the library is booked because Joe Crummerford is doing a, um, 
uh, meet and greet on October 19th at the uh, Greenfield Library, if anyone wants to go. Uh, tried the movie cinema? Yeah, so we haven't asked. asked the cinema yet. He'd probably embrace it. And we would just want to have, like, we'd probably have a table for it. Like, if they would do a weekend of showings or show up for a week, have a table, someone, our community organizer would be there who's, like, a past crisis line advocate. So we tend to get a lot of experience um disclosures mm-hmm. when we're oh, now tabling. would be great at that that's yeah. so good exactly yeah yeah, yeah. They um good. but then i w- was thinking like if we're holding an event and the mayor's dv task force wanted to have a presence there if we wanted to think about our own event or awareness campaign you know putting out a statement or having Ginny say something about domestic violence and the importance of eradicating it from our communities do a those, proclamation yeah a proclamation yeah. those things would all be really valuable for um, raising awareness um, and then also showing like support and what the mayor's DV task force is doing um, to support Greenfield, so. And you know what, I I do this um, Connections e-newsletter, which is like a, you know, a community newsletter, which goes out to sort of all of Franklin County North Club and folks, Um, but certainly a lot of Greenfield people, maybe that's an opportunity to sort of dovetail with that too. If I have the information, I can highlight the event and the movie, um, any other events that, you know, either of your organizations are doing, I can put in there. But then I I really like the idea of actually um, highlighting sort of healthy relationships, um, because that goes a lot along with kind of the way we tend to do things. Also, we do a lot of upstream prevention stuff. Um, So that might be a great tie-in. So I'd be happy to write a little something up and then run it by folks. Um, I know the um, the Children's Advocacy Center was able to get one of the rooms at the local cinema and um, and everyone got a box of popcorn. I don't know. I don't. Katie, do you know if that costs any money or I know you're not the Children's Advocacy Center, but (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, you're muted. muted. <laughs> I see that now. No, I actually think that is no cost. He, he's very convenient. Yeah, so that might be, yeah. I mean, yeah. and then it would be idea. up on the marquee too, oh, yeah. which would be cool. And it could be like Nelkwood. And then maybe the mayor could do the proclamation on the first night yeah, of like screening that. or something like that. That's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. And even if it was like. Can we call sponsor with you? Sponsor. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, if you wanted, to, I mean, we might yeah. as well. Yeah, events yeah if you're open to, to it. Put on that. Yeah. It's absolutely. Why not just do yeah. a collaborative? Well, yeah. I think that's yeah. awesome. And we have pens to hand out. We have pens. We've got awesome. pens. <laughs> even if got a banner. Like, even if they did charge us, I'm thinking that, like, you know, their fees for, like, I haven't had a kid's birthday party there but I went I've been to a kid's birthday yeah. party there and I know that it's not super expensive like I think that one of the main things is that they make money more from the concessions yeah so if they're like if we're like please go to a free movie and support the cinema with your by buying concessions like to thank them for letting us do this you know like that is probably like just getting people in the door I think for them is really helpful actually so I yeah. think they might, but even oh, they do so them. much like they do their the free movie. Yeah, it's like it's summer camp. Summer camp. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I love that idea. I know Isaac really well too. If you wanted me to call and ask, oh, but good. I don't want to. You know, well, I think you. if you could, if you could like intro it, yeah. like, hey, I, you're gonna get some outreach from Nelquit. Yeah, they really want to hold uh, like a a movie that showcases healthy relationships. Um, during and, and would you in need him to get the movie or do you already have it we can get it if you we can need get it. To. it just depends we would have to ask him like what do you need you know like what what yeah. format right I like guess. do i have yeah. to buy like the film roll or could he handle the transfer and we pay for part of the cost mm-hmm. like yeah. I think they can usually get it themselves. If it's an, if it's not like a really yeah, new, a movie, new movie, if it's not a new movie, I think it's super cheap for them. I could be wrong, but that's my understanding. And we're going to try and pick something that's positive and then have little like printouts that people can take and be like, um, what did you notice about the mom's relationship with her son? Or like, what did you like about how they communicated yeah. here? And that's beautiful. like do the little... Yeah, that's nice. like connections between because you can witness something, but we want people to think more deeply. Like, so oh, that great. was positive communication, and yeah. they did share their boundaries. <laughs> I love yeah. that. 
I love that too. What, yeah. What um, what ages is this geared towards? It's a good question. Yeah, I, the movie would be like very much like PG. So ideally, we're getting parents and um, their children up, you know, up to eleven or twelve. After a certain age, they don't want to come to the movies with their parents anymore. <laughs> Tragic. Um, but the goal really would be like that elementary age. Um, and of course, like two, three, four year olds can still go. They they'll enjoy the movie, but they won't get the same content level out of it. Yeah. But the hope is also that the adults who are there will see some of the other resources that are on the table and some of the other important mm -hmm. information. Um, I think having resources that are specific to like parents who are thinking ahead, it's like by middle school, like where are middle schoolers at with relationships, with understandings of boundaries and trying to do a little bit of a skill up, like keep an eye out for social media concerns. And so that's great. Yeah. There could be a little bit of like, um, how to talk with, how to talk with young people about healthy you know, relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That'd be so great. Um, you know, and I also think you were saying you have a list. So the other thing is that just, even if you're like, you know, did you enjoy this? Like here's some, you could even have a, maybe a few other recommendations yeah. on the materials too. I know that, I don't know where you're getting your list from. Um, but I also know that common sense media has some recommendations for sort of, um, and comments about like sort of a, appropriate movies and other media for different age groups. Um, I don't always 100% agree with what they have to say because it's so subjective and that's fine, but they might have some additional like options on there. Um, so I wonder, this, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Scott. Well, so when this topic came up, um, it made me think, and I, I guess part of my role here is to advocate for educating uh, the the younger population in Greenfield. And so we've got a, we've got a captive audience in the high school. And uh, I don't know if necessarily a movie would be the venue, but um, to show there, but, or maybe some speakers. Um, I'd like to think about that, but if October is domestic violence month, would the high school be interested in having uh, some speakers come in and uh, frankly, be pretty, lay it right out there. Um, yeah, it's, we are very interested in that. And it is incredibly hard to um, get, maybe not even just in contact with someone, but to get on the schedule and get that all through. So I think it's definitely a goal of ours and it's one that is probably more like a six month effort than a two month effort. But I, I really, I mean, the high school and middle school are key target populations for trying to work on information, education, helping them discern um, what warning signs are too. We have a, we, there's a huge problem um, in Franklin County and across the nation. It's not just us but it's very hard to get into schools since COVID. Yeah, yeah. One thing I can say, and that's true, and I realize, um, I'm sorry I didn't think about like asking if you wanted to come in for part of this, but through my role this past year, um, the guidance staff at, um, guidance and adjustment counselors at Greenfield High School the last, I don't know, two or three years, um, even since COVID have been doing like an activity week and they've been alternating between a consent week and then the next year they'll do a healthy relationships week. Oh, wow. So um, I wasn't like spearheading it at all, but um, I just like came to a couple, they're doing a lot of stuff in the cafeteria as part of it. They do a whole week. So it really sticks. It's not just sort of a one-off thing, yeah. which is great. Um, but my guess is that knowing those guidance and adjustment counselors, having like someone from Elkwood and or from Salison come and just like be there in the like, and be basically additional adults in the cafeteria yeah. would be super helpful for them because they're running off to so many different things that um, having another person who's great at talking with young people about these issues would be helpful. And so I think um, 
my role has changed just because of grant changes. And um, so I'm not going to be doing as much of that this coming year, but I could still, I'm guessing, be part of a meeting and say like, hey, could we invite Nell Quinn and Salison to this meeting and maybe they could come and help out in the cafeteria yeah. or come and help out. I think they'd oh, probably set up excited and ask, about that. Ask me anything. Like that's yes. so, it's so hard for high schoolers to be able to ask questions to people and we, yes. they won't have any pre-existing relationships with us. That's so great. they don't have to worry that it's going to, you know, it's not their social <laughs> studies teacher or their guidance counselor that is right. like, hey, and then I felt really uncomfortable by this thing. Or mm -hmm. do you think it's appropriate that this person's asking me not to hang out with my friends anymore? Like, yeah. Those are, that's actually kind of the level, um, early co coercive control that I feel like is yeah. happening at the high school level. That's and it's coded great. as love. Right, right, totally. So Scott, thank well, you so other... much for bringing that up. I'm really glad you brought that up, Scott, because I think that even if it doesn't happen in October, um, it could happen and could be connected to the mayor's task force. Um, as you yeah. probably know, years ago, they used to do, you know, performances of like the yellow dress, which I wouldn't recommend at this point. You probably remember that. Yeah, right? it's not very trauma. <laughs> yeah. But um, um, it was um, like a play about someone that was murdered by her partner. But, you know, the, we were trying to figure yeah, stuff out, was, you know? Was, yeah. yeah. But this is the best also, way to alert people to this. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but um, there, yeah. There's but also like, another, another um, uh, targeted audience that for the children or young adults who were there, whose parents, who they live in it, in a, in a violent yeah. household. Yeah, absolutely. I think opening that door, and I've got an, a number of people in the community who I've spoken with, uh, like me, who have experienced that and mm -hmm. would, would be willing to, to help arrange some kind of presentation. Anyway, maybe I should speak with with somebody uh, with at Nel at Nelquit with you and and or and or Salison and uh, those yeah. of us could just put our heads together for a you know half hour or an hour just to chat about it. I love that idea. There's some really good curriculums out there um, that are not like fear based. <laughs> Um, and there's some good materials too. So if there was a way even to get some, some bling to bring into the high school or yeah. Yeah. I think there's, enough, I think yeah. there's a couple of ways to, uh, get their attention and then uh, win them over enough to, get the kids who are in that room who have felt they can't talk to anyone about what's going on to leave the room feeling like I need to talk to somebody and, and they'll find somebody. Um, so um, that's just a, a thought. And, um, I'm glad to come down to Nelquit at some point if, if, we want to put a couple of people yeah. together here and you let me know. That'd be great. And if you can, I think it's kind of, it hinges on Alana, maybe putting us in contact with the guidance staff and then being able to build into like, Hey, we can help with this thing that you're already doing. And yeah. we would love to do some of this. And we think it's really important to have people who have survived violent homes and are adults now to be able to communicate that, you, you can you can get past this and here are some resources for you. I mean, the other challenging part is all of their teachers are mandatory mandated reporters. And so anything that students disclose, uh, it can automatically become a report, which can disrupt their lives further. It's very complicated. So being able to just talk about like, here are the resources you have if you want support. Um, and then also like some success stories and like the curriculum that you're talking about, I think would be really helpful. Yeah, and that then sounds great. I don't know if they're doing consent this coming year, or healthy relationships this coming year, because they go back and forth, and I, I can't remember now. That's funny. You can't have a healthy relationship without consent. Absolutely. I mean, really, it could follow with either, but um, but yeah, um, I'll find out. I'm actually interested. Okay. 
So that's October Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And Janine, you mentioned like a proclamation. Mm -hmm. I was there when um, the mayor did the one for um, child sexual assault oh, yes. prevention. Yeah. I thought that was great. I was also there for the one at the Chamber of Commerce where um, she declared a day for a teenager who won like a community service award. I think they're like lovely and it draw attention and maybe the Greenfield Reporter would put it in the paper and it would yeah. just drum up awareness. There's this other thing that happens in other communities and it's called the Purple Light Campaign. Um, and it might be too late for this year, but I, I think so. Purple is the color for domestic violence um, and area businesses would get purple light bulbs and put them in, in their evening lights. So the whole main street would be um, would be lit up purple and it would be a visual representation that it's Domestic Violence Awareness Fund and that people support survivors. Um, and then another piece of it that people have done in the past is had either survivors or people who support survivors um, like write little messages. So they'll do like, it's, it's kind of like a big heart um, on a poster and then they color it in and they write messages and yep. businesses display them or you can hang um, them on the street or you can hang them on the street or um exactly um or like little lawn signs we could work with hannah from the gba on that yeah i bet so i think that that would be something if the mayor's pv task force was like we would like to collaborate with the gba and get people, I think like the light bulbs are probably $5 a piece. So businesses would either have to front for the cost or we could provide it, but we don't have the mayor's domestic violence task force doesn't have the funds for it. Um, that's the one drawback, but it's a huge public awareness campaign. It doesn't take a lot um, for businesses to get involved. Um, and I think it would, it would make a lot of people be like, what are these purple lights for? Yeah, and, yeah. I love that idea. I like the street light heart painting also. Yeah, and we could certainly, um, I mean, that would be another place, Scott, where like the people that you've talked to could plug in too, like these positive messages um, from survivors, from people that grew up in houses where there's violence. And um, I mean, it sounds similar. We, uh, Alana was actually part of CWC. We had done a campaign called the Wounded Heart, and it was like an art display where survivors decorated hearts. Um, this is a little simpler and cheaper and easier, but certainly I, I know that um, folks at Salison would be really interested in hosting workshops, and so we could have all the messages. I love that. Yeah. And that's a really inexpensive. And we could display them at the library. Yeah, we yeah. can reserve the library and and be able to have people come in and oh, just write it. messages. Yeah. Similar to like the clothesline project. I don't know if people are familiar with that. So that's the for sexual assault awareness month, and people will um, decorate T-shirts if they're survivors or supporters of people who are survivors. And they'll, sometimes it's poems, sometimes it's someone's individual story or a drawing, and then they get hung up. And it's like a representation of like the, it, like the number of people who are ex, you know, experiencing sexual assault. And we've actually hung them in the um, Greenfield Commons. Yeah, we before. did it in the common um, for uh, domestic, uh, we did it in October one year because nice. it was cold. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we do it, we display them in April. Yeah, that's probably just because it works out better for yeah. Us. Yeah, and it and the the original idea was a mass. It's a national thing, but it it started in Massachusetts, and it was this idea of like um, violence is such a private issue, and airing kind of airing your dirty laundry, like telling your story and hanging it up and breaking that silence. So it's very powerful. And people also always say we. We did the Jadu fundraiser and there were a lot of survivors. We had survivors on stage and we had survivors in the crowd from Nelfit years past and current. And they said that uh, a lot of people said having so many people show up in support of Nelfit and by extension survivors felt so um, like validating. And like they've all said that it like 
fill their hearts to know that people care about what's happening to them. Because part of the, you know, course of control and the experience is the silence, the shame. And then also usually your abuser is saying, you're not worth anything and no one cares about you. And so what's happening to you really doesn't matter because this is your own fault. And so to have community really show that they care and that they stand against is like, I think it, the more we can do that, the better our community gets at uh, being able to support survivors and for survivors to feel like they deserve something else. That's true. Uh, one sobering statistic that I heard on uh, uh, NPR as they were interviewing someone who'd written a book on domestic violence, they said that uh, between nine, uh, 1900 and 1999, more people were killed by domestic violence than were killed in all of our wars. Wow. wow. Now, wow. if that's accurate, I, I, I don't know, but that's sobering. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got a lot. It's anything else? Seems like some really good ideas were generated, and um, love that. Yeah. Um, I don't know, does anyone have any updates from their programs that are helpful to sort of have out there with each other or like on the recording? You could discuss how your move's going <laughs> <laughs> and how you never want to see a cardboard box again. Yes. I was just letting people know that the Salazen Project, we used to be on Main Street, um, 474 Main Street, and now we moved into Riddell, 33 Riddell Street. There's like a hearing doctor. There's a couple social workers that I, a lot of people go to that. I sent her there. So we have this beautiful, beautiful new space. Um, awesome. Yeah. I'm, I mean, it's a, yeah, it's, it's good. I mean, I think we, um, you know, for people that we support that are unhoused, that main street location is a good, but you can still walk to Riddell. So um, it's just a lot more space and we'll be able to offer, one of the things we're going to be starting is, um, we're going to offer some yoga on site because we have a big enough space to do it. So we're really, so cool. yeah. So we're just like un finishing unpack. We still don't have internet and, you know, all those things like that are critical right now when you move to operate a, a program. So We'll be having an open house in September, so I'll definitely let people nice. know. And um, we're in the planning stages, and I'll maybe you can put it in the newsletter. Oh, yeah, I'd love and, to. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So. Yes. yes. <laughs> sure. Is the yoga open to everyone? Oh yeah, it'll be open to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Our healing arts groups. We don't. Um, we don't. We might ask you to talk to talk to us before you come in, but we don't like screen people out generally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't have to show your trauma card in order mm -hmm. to get into the group. <laughs> what I love too, and when I'm thinking about that location is that if someone's feeling shy about going to a place, like sort of walking into a particular building or whatever, that's a really like sort of low barrier kind of building to walk into. Yeah. There's so many things happening. So that's neat. Um, thanks. Yeah, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Wow, Nelquit and Salison both managed to move off of Main Street and out of old houses. Is yeah. the upgrade update on your name change? We're presenting the three options we have to the staff today. Oh, so, oh wow, yeah. that's really exciting. So we'll get let them vote and then we'll kind of work back. I have two that I like a lot. And the third one I'm like, is fine. It's better than Nelquit. So um, I'll, I'll, this doesn't leave the room because well, you're, you're being too but... let's, let's wait until. All right. I won't put it in the minutes. minutes. Well, no, but we're recording. Oh, yeah. So after I'll the wait meeting, after. We'll have another I'll tell you what. We'll one do it in executive is. session. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and we still have a basic needs closet and a fully functioning food pantry. 
Um, we're working on getting a capacity building grant to be able to offer like more frozen foods. Um, and we're interested in seeing if there are fresh food trucks that could come to Nelquit after hours occasionally, um, so that there wouldn't be crossover between, you know, we don't want clients walking in and having random community members, but when we're closed, we figured if we have a good parking lot, it's a good location, people could come. And so just trying to expand that without, uh, spending too much money. And then we just purchased a condo on main street to move our visitation center so oh wow yeah. and it'll be closer to court so our safe plan advocates will have an office that's like across the street from the courthouse and that's amazing yeah that's great we just yeah. got the new carpet in it looks good. it's great <laughs> is it going to be in the same building that the um uh, uh community action community action great. yeah are you so, on the first floor uh second second but it's fully ADA accessible and the condo has two different entrances. So there's one that has a stair walk up and one that um, you can be, be able to feel into. Wow, okay. that's so cool. Yeah. And that's so close to the library too. Oh, do you, should we put, do you think it makes sense to put the visitation center on the map or that's not really a walk in? Yeah, yeah that's kind of what I thought too. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of what I thought, but um, that's helpful. So okay. we have a, we had some much more secure location, but that's good. Yeah. No, that makes sense. That's really exciting. Wow. And then um, our orange office is doing walk-ins for the first time since COVID on Mondays, mm -hmm. nine to four. Yeah, we're finally like more fully staffed in our, um, uh, the CAC is actually right next door to, to us in Orange. So it'll be the CAC and then we'll be right there and then the community health center. So it's turning into a good social services hub. That's awesome. Um, and I don't know if you're connected with valuing our children in North Baltimore Community yeah. Coalition. Yeah, okay, that's great. Um, just because they're more, more athletic focused, but I bet they'll be excited about it. Yeah, Orange and Athol are just like strange. Yeah. Well, like they really are working together yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the um, Athol City Planner or Town Planner is always reaching out to me about grant stuff, um, like three days before the grant is due. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I need a budget. And I'm like, yeah, I do it. I do. Oh, and there's a national night out in Orange, and um, Nelquit will be there, and Catholic. Mon Montague Catholic Social Ministries will also be there on uh, September 6th. Oh, wait, August 6th. My bad. Yeah, okay. I can be able to have another newsletter for them, but that's cool. Okay. Anything from folks online about program updates or anything else? I'll share that um, we're going to be starting a Beyond Trauma support group. It's going to start September 12th. Um, so people can call um, our main line and um, one of the facilitators will call them back. So um, it's an eight week group um, and focuses on education about the impact of trauma and healthy relationships. So we should have a flyer for that shortly. Um, that's going out and yeah. Yeah, I'm guessing I'll put that on CRN, but if I get that before the August newsletter, I can put that in there too. Yeah, yeah. what's your deadline for the August newsletter? That's a good question. Um, like the 9th of August? Yeah. Okay. Cause it's, it's not until mid August that it comes out. So yeah, great. Yeah. Definitely um, try to connect with that for and for the open house too. Okay. Anything yeah. else on your end? No, I think that's it. Meet again in August. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Great. Thanks nice to much. meet you. Great. Thank you. And, and our August date is, I'm going to say this so I know. The no, that's the 28th. 
Okay. Okay. Is that right? 28? Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, I have that as a Wednesday though. Yes, Wednesday, the, Wednesday at 11. Yes. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.